Autumn has commenced the season of change, and just like the season, this update brings a lot of changes. First off, let's address the cake party in the room, or the lack thereof. We saw firsthand the magic that's made when players come together, work towards a common goal, and reap the rewards. We knew that this was the kind of thing that needed to be preserved for the social multiplayer game that we want Palia to be. But celebration cakes were simply just too profitable. Based on the data we saw, it wasn't just outscaling every other dish. Celebration cakes were making more profit than any other goal generating activity in any skill by a large margin. We set out to make adjustments that ultimately should create a healthier and more sustainable cooking experience for the long run. The sell price of cakes has been reduced by 40%. The recipe for the celebration cake has been changed. Jam has now been replaced by fruit tossing, which is made with any fruit and sugar, which you can now purchase at the general store for 20 gold. The recipe now calls for an additional step of spreader for each fruit tossing. Now we've known that the cake parties were going to be nerfed for a while, but these changes also affected cooking as a whole. The buy and sell value for butter has been reduced, and the buy and sell value for milk has also been reduced. All cooking dishes have had their sell values reduced by 25%, which also affected the focus values for a lot of them. The following dishes will now grant more focus. Buya base, mushroom quiche, quiche bahari, sushi, midi udon, and poke. And these dishes will now grant less focus. Stuffed mushrooms, steak dinner, akuwundu chapa, chapa masala, creamy carrot soup, loaded potato soup, macaron, blueberry pie, apple pie, celebration cake, onigiri, and crab pot pie. They went on to say, our goal is for there to be a variety of recipes to choose from, so that it's cooking parties, not just cake parties. You can also be on the lookout for new recipes coming soon that we hope will be just as fun and worthwhile to cook. The changes don't stop there though. Gardening and fishing also saw some changes. The tooltip for the Speedy Grow fertilizer has been updated to better reflect its function. The sell value of Speedy Grow has been reduced from 10 to 5 gold. The cost to buy fertilizer from Badru has been reduced from 20 metals to 10. Worm farms and glow farms will produce less from cooked dishes. The worm farms will also produce more when star quality ingredients are added and glowworm farms will also produce twice as much speedy grow fertilizer compared to before. Mining and foraging also saw some changes. Medium-sized pallium nodes now drop an additional pallium ore, making the minimum two. Medium-sized pallium nodes now also grant more skill XP to better match their small and larger counterparts. The value for all tree seeds has been increased, and the value for rare oyster drops has also been increased. They said that the changes they made to tree seeds and the oyster drops were in order to bring up the profit value from foraging. It finally came time, just like the autumn trees, the Magi Market is leafing for a while, but don't worry, they said it will be back. Overall, we learned a lot from our first game event during open beta, and for what themed events should look like for Palio. We plan to use this experience to make our next event even better. For those of you who completed achievements for the Magi Market stamp card but did not receive your reward, be sure to check your news inbox, you should be receiving them there, with the exception of Dragon Fireworks or Jangu Drum. But they did say you'll have an opportunity to get these items in future events. Black Market, now known as the Grimalkin Underground, has also been completely revamped. You'll find a second wondrous machine now in the underground, making it more convenient, and Reth will now have a proper bar to work at. He'll sell some of the same items you'd see when he's over at the Ormu Inn, they said they also have plans to have Wrath sell more unique items in the future. We've also seen the arrival of a couple things that were promised a few updates back. The Neil emote, so you will now be able to properly pay your respects at the shrine. We've gotten more interactivity with bathtubs and sinks to further enhance your role-playing needs. We've also got some more quality of life changes. There were improvements to gardening. They added a visual effect when you successfully hoe a plot. They've also made it so you can finally remove misplaced crops. With the hoe tool selected, hold right click over the specific slot you wish to remove the seed from. You'll have to fully complete the animation for it to be destroyed and you won't get your seed back. So still be mindful of where you place. Crops will now also continue to grow without requiring you to visit your home plot. You will still have to make sure they're watered, otherwise they will not grow. Several items like the resource trackers, kits, the smoke candle, and honey lures are now properly categorized as equipment instead of consumables, and tools now have their own tab in the workbench to reduce the amount of scrolling when crafting. Onto the premium store, four new outfits have been added this update. The Sylph Bundle, the Folk Flowers Bundle, the Smoking Jacket Bundle, and the Everyday Flare Bundle. As always, we have the bug fixes for this cycle. Players can now acquire the Emberborn Furniture Recipe through one of the Temple Flame Bundles. If you've already completed the bundles, you'll now find the first Emberborn Furniture available at your workbench. 
Hot hounds and crab gumbo recipes can now be discovered properly. They can be found in the spaces of two certain villagers. The mushroom dinner recipe that had gone missing is now available again. The dragon tide folding screen will now appear as expected in the black market. The floating relic quest item will no longer accidentally be consumed. If you had accidentally eaten this relic before, you will now find it returned to you in your inventory. Villagers who request corn as a gift will now accept it, and clicking dismiss when receiving a friend or party request will now dismiss it as expected. We also have the top known issues, a couple of which showed up in the last patch cycle. Adding 99 fertilizer to all 9 slots of the gardening plot will make it unintractable. Interacting with the wardrobe while your character is stuck in the missing texture and T-pose appearance will cause your character to reset. There are also ongoing issues with general achievements including darkened silhouettes for previously caught critters and rewards not being granted. If you had been having trouble catching the sushi recipe, fret not. We finally gotten some acknowledgement that it could potentially be a bug. So they are looking into it and I will notify you as soon as we get an answer. Plot lag is also still an issue while decorating on your home plot. They said this is a priority and they're looking to fix it by the next big update. They've also mentioned that there's a hot fix incoming within the next few days to hopefully fix a couple bugs and bring some quality of life changes as well. Finally, we got some closing remarks from the team. It's been an incredible experience as we've gone from alpha into beta. It's a much bigger playing field and one we're still learning to better accommodate. With all these new players means more data, more feedback, and more information for us to evaluate, adjust, and communicate out accordingly. One of the benefits of being a live service game is that Pallia is constantly evolving. Change can be scary, especially when it's perceived as nerfs. The biggest takeaway? Nothing is set in stone. We will continue to improve, and it's because of our players. With so many beta testers here with us, we know that Pallia will be a game we can be truly proud of and share to the world. We want to thank everyone who is with us and will continue to be with us as we navigate this incredible journey together.